Nigeria's government repays China, IMF, Islamic Bank, and others 3.63 trillion naira debt. Medical associations react to UK ban on Nigerian doctors, nurses, and orders. Yelling to push development bank evolution at spring meetings. And in sports, Adesoya knocks out Pereira to regain UFC middleweight belt. And this is Malachi TV's Global News, reaching you live from the city of Lekoja, the confluent state of Nigeria. My name is Mono Balagubu. Thank you for joining us. The Nigerian government, under President Muhammad Buhari, says it has successfully repaid a debt of 3.63 trillion naira owed to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, Chinese government, Arab Bank, amongst several orders. A data from the Debt Management Office, DMO, obtained by journalists, revealed that Nigeria spent the said sum servicing its external and domestic debts in 2022. The data also revealed that Nigeria used the exchange rate of 448.08 Naira to pay off external debt of $2.40 billion, which amounted to 1.03 trillion Naira, as the data explained in detail. The monthly breakdown of how the federal government repaid the debt to domestic creditors in 2022. The Boucher State Muslim Pilgrims Welfare Board has called on intending pilgrims heading to Saudi Arabia for Ramadan Umar pilgrimage to be good ambassadors of the state and Nigeria at large. The executive secretary of the board, Imam Abdurrahman Ibrahim Idris, made the call while bidding farewell to the 2023 prospective Umar pilgrims at the headquarters of the board in Bauchi. In a release issued by the State Pilgrims Board Information Officer, Mohamed Sani Yunusa, the board's executive secretary, urged them to be good ambassadors, to obey Saudi laws and to portray Nigeria in good light. While congratulating the prospective pilgrims, he advised them to make good use of the opportunity to be spiritually alert, pray for themselves, peace and the development of the country. Imam Abdurrahman, however, warned them against carrying any type of prohibited items along and charged them to do the needful to make Bauchi State proud. The management of Friesland Campina Wamco Nigerian PLC manufacturers of pig milk has apologized to the Christian Association of Nigeria Can for using the crucifixion of Jesus Christ as a metaphor to promote their product on Good Friday, saying the social media's advertisement has been withdrawn. While acknowledging the sensitivity of the social media post, considering the sobriety of the season, the organization said it was neither intended to make light of the significance of the season nor inordinately to exploit the unmatched sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The executive director of corporate affairs of the organization, Ore Farmerewa, expressed remorse in a letter to the president of Khan, Archbishop Daniel Oko, while pleading with Khan to accept the organization's deepest apology, they pledged to prevent a recurrence of such in the future. The public apology by the organization was in response to the Christian Association of Nigerians' demand of an apology from Friesland Campina Wamco Nigerian PLC, makers of pig milk, over its Easter advert, which the body described as disrespectful and offensive. Ten months after a deadly attack on the St. Francis Catholic Church, Hoalua Owo, in Ondo State, by gunmen, the church reopened last Sunday, 9th April 2023, for service. Worshippers who defied fears to attend Easter Sunday service expressed pleasure for the re reopening of the church. Addressing the congregation, the Catholic Bishop of Ondo Diocese, Bishop Jude, Arogundade lamented the growing level of insecurity in the country. Arogundade appealed to the government to ensure that the attackers were brought to book to serve as deterrent to others. The bishop prayed for the congregants, especially the injured and those that lost their relatives, promising that the church would not abandon them. Arogundade appreciated the aid to the church in need, 
Governor Rutimi Akeridulu and other donors for extending their help to the church. Some worshippers who were unable to control their emotions were seen weeping while recalling the ugly incident and asked the church members to keep praying for those still suffering in trauma as a result of the attack. No fewer than 40 worshippers died in the June 5, 2020 attack by gunmen who opened fire at the innocent worshippers in the church. Christians have been told to use the occasion of this year's Easter celebration to pray for Nigeria and the transition moment that will have the new president-elect, Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu, sworn in on May 29, 2023. The international president of Stand Up for Women's Society, Barrister Deborah Ijadele Adetona, made the call in a statement through the association's public relations officer, Liberator Bilu Mwogu, while celebrating with Christians faithful across the globe on Easter festival, which marks the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Barrister Deborah advised Nigerians to embrace peace and unity, which are part of the ingredients to build a greater and better society that the citizens will continue to be proud of at all times. She said the season is not only to celebrate, but to touch lives positively, giving meaning to those who have lost hope of living due to the untold challenges they face. As Christians celebrate the 2023 Easter, they have been reminded about the need for them to win souls to the kingdom of God. A pastor at the Holy Flock of Christ District 8, Lokongoma Phase 1, Lokoja Branch, Elijah Ivanemi, and the general overseer of the Global Overcomers Family Church, Apostle Julius Gabriel Okolo, made the call in an interview with our reporter, Pastor Elijah said, Heaven laid his life on the cross for the redemption of sins, for the, of the sins of men. Christ commanded his followers to go out and preach the gospel to others, stressing that such assignment should be treated with all seriousness. Let's now join Joshua Adinoyi for the rest of the story. The Christian holiday, Easter, also called Pasture or Resurrection Sunday, marks the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for the sins of humanity. It proves him as the true Son of God, who defeated evil and death before ascending to heaven. Addressing the congregation on Easter Sunday 2023, Pastor Elijah Evenemi of the Holy Flock of Christ, Lokoja, noted that it is important for believers to make soul winning a priority, pointing out that it is the greatest assignment of Christ to man. Pastor Elijah enjoined Christians not to be wary in doing good to others, stressing that winning souls to God's kingdom will not only come through preaching, explaining that their lifestyles also serves as mirror for others to see. This resurrection brought justification to mankind. When men sinned in the garden of Eden, we lost the Holy Spirit, we lost righteousness and even dominion. But at this day that we are celebrating, Christ regained all those that were lost in the time of uh, Adam. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, Go into the world and preach the gospel. So preach to the hopeless that there is hope to the believe in Jesus Christ. The general overseer of the global overcomers family, Lokongoma Fiswan, Lokoja, Apostle Julius Gabriel Okolo advised Christians to always ponder over the sacrifices of Christ on the cross of Calvary and live righteous lives. Easter is uh, basically the celebration of the success of Christ. He succeeded over processes, the crucifixion, which is his death, the, the burial, and above all, the resurrection which is the reason why we celebrate. Because Jesus was not just crucified alone. He was crucified with the whole world. And with the whole world, he went into the grave. And with the whole world, he resurrected. And it's worth celebrating because if Jesus had failed in any of those phases, in any of those processes, the whole world would have failed along. Songs of victory 
and dance spice the services as the congregation also listened to teachings. <laughs> I am Joshua Adenoy, reporting for MLC TV. Christian faithfuls have been encouraged to live a Christ-like life here on earth as they prepare for the second coming of Christ. The senior pastor of Revival House Church at Phase 2, Halid Ibra Abraham and the presiding bishop of the Overcomers Ministry at Aguan TV New Layout, Ben Ajileye, both in Lokoja local government area of Kogi State, made the call during the Easter Sunday service in their churches. They advised believers to live according to the word of God, saying that such will enable them please God in their dealings. Our reporter has the details. At the Revival House Church, the senior pastor, Ali Duhabram, said, Easter represents the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and called on Christians to continually think of the sacrifice Jesus rendered for humanity. Pastor Halidu Abraham emphasized that the resurrection of Jesus Christ brought victory and fulfillment of several prophecies by prophets of the old as narrated in the scriptures. But the fact that Jesus resurrected from the grave is what makes Christianity authentic? He is alive. He is not dead. He promised to come back to life on the third day. And it really happened. That is the hope of the child of God. That is our strength. It is in that name of the resurrected Jesus we pray. And everything about Christianity is anchored on the fact that Christ died and rose again. Our victory, our healing, our deliverances, our salvation, whatever we enjoy as Christians is simply because he died and rose again. And since he did this, we celebrate. And the reason why we celebrate was because he did not do this to show power, to show how powerful he is. Or he didn't do it to show as a show of force to Satan that he did all these things just for me to have freedom, to be forgiven of my sin, to be pardoned, is the greatest reason why we Christians celebrate. As the Overcomers Faith Ministry, Aguan TV newly held local Jakogi State, Bishop Ben Ajileye advised Christians to live their life for God and to serve as his ambassador at all times. John chapter 19 and verse 30 says, it is finished on the cross jesus said it is finished that means all your problems all your challenges are finished on the cross so easter simply means the debt that jesus had to pay for humanity to be restored back to god hallelujah live your life for god surrender your heart to, to christ uh, we're watching a film some time ago it's called the passion of the cross and i saw the way jesus had to go through pain, though it was a movie, but it's very touching. If he had done that for us, I don't think there's anything too big for us to do. So my advice to you, for you to surrender your heart to him, to accept him as the Lord and your personal savior. The cleric man prayed for the resurrection of every good thing in Nigeria and prayed for the peaceful transition into the next government. Oh, my wonderful prayer to our dear country, Nigeria, is that God will give us good leadership. We pray that God will give us a transparent government, government that we see to the need of the people, that we hear the cry of the masses, and that will come to the rescue of everyone in our country. So my advice to our dear nation and my prayer is that God will give us a good hand, a good leader in this end time, so that Nigeria can rise again among the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Worshippers at various churches sang and danced to praise God for witnessing another Easter in the land of the living. Richard Ayokomitoli reporting from MLC TV.
Medical associations in countries affected by the United Kingdom's ban on health care workers have said the ban will not stop doctors in their countries from leaving for greener pastures elsewhere. They say that the United Kingdom can only define its terms, but the freedom of movement is a fundamental right. The reaction followed the ban by the United Kingdom on 54 countries recognized by the World Health Organization as having the most pressing healthcare workforce-related issues. The Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, and the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, reacted to the revised code of practice by the United Kingdom, while which listed Nigeria and 54 other countries where healthcare workers are recruited. NMA President Dr. Uche Ujinma said in an interview that Nigerian doctors migrate to other countries because of poor remuneration and treatment by the Nigerian government. He stressed that he does not blame the UK for recruiting Nigerian doctors because they are treated poorly in Nigeria, saying if the government and people place importance on Nigerians, the doctors will stay. Reports say that Nigeria has the third highest number of foreign doctors working in the UK after India and Pakistan. Other countries affected by the restriction include Afghanistan, Angola, Bangladesh, Benin Republic, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Cameroon, Central African Republic, Chad, Comoros, amongst others. We'll now go on a short break. We'll be right back. Please to stay with us. Malachi TV Online is here for your timely and reliable news that reaches you fast with the breaking news. Choose MLC TV. Get human interest stories right here on MLC TV with entertainment, sports, business, culture, tourism, and fashion news stories all featured on MLC TV. Not forgetting political and current affairs news, state and federal government and people's matters will be discussed regularly on MLC TV. MLC TV, your one-stop online destination for unbiased, accurate news, entrepreneur ideas and youth matters to the rest of the world. MLC TV, written everywhere, informing everyone. Welcome back from the break and now to stories in politics. The All Progressive Congress, APC, has expelled the Senator-elect of Taraba South Senatorial District, David Jim Kuta, for allegedly engaging in anti-party activities and tampering with the process of internal democracy of the party. Jim Kuta was expelled by the executives of his local government chapter of the APC, through an expulsion letter which was signed on Friday, April 7, 2023, by 27 lawmakers of the state executives and made available to journalists thereafter. Rising from its meeting on Friday, the ex codes of Takum local government area stated that they had reviewed, among other things, the report of the disciplinary committee set up to investigate the allegations of gross anti-party activities against Jim Kuta before taking the decision to expel him. They stated that the anti-party activities forming the basis for his action include sponsorship and openly campaigning for a rival political party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Taraba State and its governorship candidate, express and tacit denunciation of the All Progressive Congress and its governorship candidate, amongst others. And on the foreign scene, United States Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen will on Wednesday host a roundtable discussion on further steps to evolve the World Bank and other developmental lenders to tackle climate change and other global crises beyond a $5 billion annual World Bank lending expansion. The United States Treasury Secretary in a statement explained that this, the discussion on the sidelines of the World Bank and international Fund spring meetings will bring together finance ministers from major shareholders and borrowing countries that will cover ways to maintain momentum to evolve the multilateral development banks to better meet current challenges. 
The World Bank has proposed balance sheet changes that would quickly allow it to lend an additional 50 billion US dollars over 10 years while maintaining its top tier AAA credit rating, a step that bank shareholders are widely expected to adopt this week. U.S. Treasury Undersecretary Jay Shamba said the reforms amounted to a once-in-a-generation transition of the institutions and called the World Bank's plans a down payment on the reforms that would be de deepened in time and spread to other multilateral developmental banks. Shamba said it was important to fix the bank's operational structure and incentives and ensure effective use of funds, noting that some of the developmental banks had considerable room on their balance sheets. Egypt's foreign minister, Sama Shalkri, is set to visit Turkey again this week. The country's government in Ankara in a statement explained that the progress could be made towards the reinstatement of envoys after relations ended a decade ago. Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlot Kavusklu told private broadcaster Ahaba that his counterpart would come soon, hopefully this week, with details to be given on Wednesday. Kavux Glue visited Cairo last month, a decade after diplomatic links were cut by the overthrow of Egypt's then president and Ankara's ally Mohamed Morsi. He also visited Turkey two weeks ago to show solidarity after the massive earthquakes that killed more than 50,000 people in Turkey and Syria. Shah Krisel last month talks with Turkey on the possibility of restoring ambassadors what happened at the appropriate time. For sports update, let's join Jona Malik. Around sports update, Israel Adesanya has stunned Brazilian Alex Pereira with a knockout blow to reclaim the middleweight crown in the main event of the UFC 287 at the FTX Arena in Miami, Florida. He downed the Brazilian in the second round to avenge his only UFC defeat at middleweight. The knockout came from nowhere as Pereira was initially on the offense. In a post-fight interview in the cage, Adesanya boasted that his last punch had everything, describing it as last hammer fist from the gods. The 33-year-old told the fans in attendance that he hoped they would have the chance to feel the same joy that they felt after his victory. The victory has returned the Nigerian-born New Zealander to the top of the middleweight pile, a weight class that he has dominated for the last four years. Still on sports, the technical advisor of Wiki Therese Football Club, Abdullahi Adamu, has resigned from his position. Adamu, in a letter to the chairman of Wiki Therese FC, lamented that he had not been given the opportunity to fully function in his office since assuming duty as technical advisor of the club due to interferences by the club's management. According to him, he was rendered helpless, which resulted in the club's abysmal performance during matches. And that sports update on MLC TV News. I am Malik Jonah reporting back to Acosta. Thanks for the update, Jonah. Joy Dada will now take us through the latest happenings in the entertainment world. Welcome to our entertainment segment. I am Joy Dada. You edited the lead post about second wife from his Instagram page. Please arrest prime suspect in Instagram clothes vendors' deaths. Popular Nollywood actor Yu Edoche has deleted all the posts about his second wife from his Instagram page. This in the wake of the passing of his first son with his first wife, May. Kambili Chuku, who passed away on Thursday, 
March 30th, after he suddenly developed a seizure while playing football with his schoolmates. The controversial actor, who remained silent over the issue on social media, was said to have urged the police to look into the tragic incident. In a rather shocking development, Yu Edoche had taken down all the posts from his social media page. First, he deleted all the pictures he has posted about all with his second wife, Judy, and also deleted the post he made last April, announcing that he had taken a second wife and had a child with her. At this time, the only picture he didn't delete from his April 2022 was that of himself and his father. It wasn't clear why he took down the photos, but at the time of this report, photos of his first wife, May, were still on his page. The prime suspect in the case of an Ibadan-based Instagram cloth vendor, Adeshina Olainka, popularly called Kadin, who died mysteriously at Wetland Hotel, Akabo, in Ibadan, Oyo State, is currently in police custody. Kedi was found there after the man she was with checked out earlier in the morning. It was gathered that the suspect is currently in the custody of the State Criminal Investigation Department. It was gathered that the suspect, named Sweethead, presented himself to the police at Akabo Police Division, having heard that his attention was needed by the police over Kedi's death. When contacted, the State Police Public Relations Officer, Adewole Osifeso, simply said, Investigation is in progress and updates will be provided accordingly. Thanks for joining me. I am Joy Dada, reporting for MLC TV. Let's join our caster for more stories. Thanks for the updates. The Chairman, Board of Trustees, Zaria Education Development Association, Zeda, and Executive Secretary of the NUC, Professor Idris Aldekade, is dead. Confirming his death, Zeda spokesman Mohamed Bilo Habib explained that Professor Aldekade died in the early hours of Monday in Abuja at the age of 79. The late Professor of Veterinary Medicine is survived by a wife and 10 children. Until his death, Professor Elder Kader was the chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Zaria Education Development Association, ZEDA, a non-governmental organization, a veterinary medicine professor at the Amadou Bello University, ABU Zaria, who rose through the ranks to become dean of the university's faculty of veterinary medicine. He was appointed Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, NUC, and relocated from Lagos to Abuja, where he was successfully constructing the magnificent edifice on Aguin Rossi Way, Meitama, Abuja, which is now the Commission's headquarters. The Shetima of Ibira Land, Al Haji M. J. Bajason, is dead. Aged 85 years, he died in the early hours of Sunday, 9th April 2023, and his body was laid to rest at his residence in Cardinal State. The news of his death, which came to all and sundry with a rude shock, has seen several sons and daughters of Ibiru Land send their condolences to the family of the deceased. Late Bejasin was said to be a great scholar who authored a book and many articles published in local and international languages. He was a teacher, a successful businessman, a mentor to many whose outstanding contributions to the socio-economic development of Ibera land earned him a traditional title, the Shetima of Ibera land, which was conferred on him by His Royal Highness the Ohinoi of Ibera land, al Haji Mohammed Sani Omonori of Blessed Memory. It was gathered that he was instrumental in the establishment of Tau FM radio station and Ovidi Microfinance Bank, as many also describe the deceased as a cheerful and silent giver, a peacemaker, a dogged fighter, and a blunt speaker who always stood on the side of the truth, not minding whose ox was God. May their souls rest in peace. And that is the size of our package today. If you like what we are doing, 
do support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Malachite TV. Like and follow our Facebook pages, MLC TV and MLC TV2. Instagram handle, MLC TV 2021. Twitter at MLC TV1. For your event coverage appearance on any of our programs, contributions, comments, adverts, placements or sponsorship, please call or send an SMS to any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join Malachite TV on weekends to watch our various programs on Saturday, the Political Arena by 7 p.m. and on Sunday, 6 p.m., Women's World, on Monday, 9 a.m., The Opinion. It's Malachite TV reaching everywhere, informing everyone. Continue to be your brother's keeper to build a happier and better society together. I am Mono Balagubu thanking you for watching. See you same time tomorrow. Have a great day.